You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry, be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Welcome. This is A Flame Ministry, and I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. And you are, we are here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And this is a show about ministry for people of all faiths, uh, those who are professionals in ministry, as well as those who are part of the ministry of a faith community. And as always, we have two goals to the show. First is to try to dispel any misconceptions between faiths and, if possible, build some bridges. And the second goal is to discuss issues of ministry that are common to all faiths. And my guest today is Dr. Jacqueline Bussey. Um, she's been a guest before, way back in uh, February of this year. Uh, she's an author, professor, theologian, public speaker, and student of life in all its messy beauty. Her first book, uh, Laughter of the Oppressed, was published in 2007 and won the National Trinity Prize. Her second book, Outlaw Christian, Finding Authentic Faith by Breaking the Rules, was published in 2016 and won the 2017 Gold Medal Illumination Award for Christian Living. Her third book, Love Without Limits, Jesus' Radical Vision for a Love with No Exceptions, was released late last month, and it has received excellent reviews from the Chicago Tribune and Publishers Weekly, which called it, and I quote, a must-read for all Christians interested in inclusivity in their communities, end quote. Dr. Bussey is an active servant leader in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. She teaches religion, theology, and interfaith study classes at Concordia College in in Moorhead, Minnesota, where she also serves as the director of the Forum of on Life and Faith. Jacqueline's favorite classes to teach include The Problem of Evil, Modern Christian Thought, Religion and Literature, Faith in Dialogue, and Compassion and Hope. Every day, she's amazed and grateful that she actually gets paid to do the three things she loves the most— one, interact with incredible students. Two, write. And three, try to make the world a more compassionate place. In her free time, Jacqueline loves to read, ride in the front car of roller coasters, take ballroom dance classes with her husband, and travel to any place she's never been before. She's a huge fan of long walks, laughter, the band Bon Iver, the smell of honeysuckle on a hot day, and her husband's fantastic fajitas. Her favorite place to write is next to any body of water. Though Jacqueline hails from Florida, she now lives in Fargo, North Dakota, which is all the proof she needs that God's sense of humor is alive and well. So, Jacqueline, welcome to A Flame Ministry for the second time around. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kathleen. It's wonderful to be on the show again. And we're going to be talking about your new book. And that book has 
a backstory to it uh, about how it almost didn't come to be. So please share that story with our listeners. Yes, absolutely. Unlike other books I've written, Kathleen, this one does have uh, a rather unfortunate and interesting backstory, though it does have a happy ending. So yes, so basically I was in contract to, to write the book called Love Without Limits, Jesus' Radical Vision for Love with No Exceptions. And I completed the book on time. I took a year's leave off from my regular work of being a professor at Concordia College in order to write the book for my publisher. And I had signed a contract with a very large Christian publishing house at at the time. And they were very excited about it. And I completed it. And my publisher really loved the book. And they also said, though, that there was one issue with it. And I got on the phone with them, and I talked to them about what was what was the one issue. And they said, well, Jacqueline, and I'm quoting here, they said, it's the gays and the Muslims. And I had told in the book, Kathleen, some very positive, humanizing true stories about some dear friends of mine, uh, some from the LGBTQ community, but also many from the Muslim community whom I work with right here in town, you know, running an interfaith peace building center for my college. And so I said, well, I don't understand, you know, what, what's wrong? What do you mean? Like, what are the things that I can't say? I asked the publisher that. And they said, well, some of the stories you're telling just aren't in line with the values of the majority. And so they rewrote the two chapters that dealt with those, um, those particular friends and told those stories and they sent it to me and it was horrible. I mean, the cuts were so painful. They just broke my heart. I mean, basically they deleted my friends, you know, and these are, these are people whom I love, of course. And so I refused (laughs) to cut those stories because (laughs) they were the sign of the book. You know, the book couldn't stand up without those, those amazing stories of, of love and how my friends taught me to love bigger and better. So I said, I can't do that. And I knew that that would have bad repercussions and it did. So the press said, well, if, you know, said to me and my agent, they said, if she's not going to cut it, cut those tails and we're not going to publish it. And she has to pay us back every cent of her advance because we own the rights to the book. We paid her to write it. And the advance was, was, you know, very generous, and it was an annual salary, essentially. And I did not Mm -hmm. have the money to pay them back, of course, because I had lived off of that money when I was on leave from my regular job, you know, to write that book. And it was the book we had agreed to. So that was very painful uh, for me. (laughs) And I don't know if you want me to tell how this story was resolved, Kathleen, but but that's that's part of the backstory. That's the backstory of how I, I ended up losing the book for, for quite some time, for an entire summer. I lost the rights to the book. I lost the book itself. I felt as if I'd lost, a, you know, a year of my life. But more importantly, I felt the pain of the way we've shoved many people in our society uh, to, to the shadows and to the sidelines. Yeah, and that's you tell the story in your introduction, but the, like you said, there is a happy ending to it. Uh, please, I, obviously the book has been published, but there's a little bit more to it than just that. So can you please fill us in on the rest of that story? Yes, absolutely. So it, has, it, it starts off as a terrible story, and it has such a beautiful and redemptive ending of solidarity that I, I love to tell the ending. So basically what happened was I fell into some despair. You know, I'm not going to lie. I got really depressed about what had happened. I didn't see a way out. I, you know, I, I, I had, I had lost a lot, but, but mostly what I had lost was hope kind of in the publishing industry, the Christian publishing industry. I didn't, know that this is how it went, you know, that there was censorship so much along the way that it it actually controls what can be published. And so, you know, once that your innocence is lost, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult. And first of all, I felt terrible, you know, for my friends whom I was asked to delete. And so one day after I had really fallen into a funk, actually I was talking to a friend. I, I, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have to take a break and uh, for our first commercial, so we're gonna have to leave people hanging a little bit. So, 
Okay. This is the BBM Global Network at TuneIn Radio and a Flame Ministry. We are going to be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back. This is a Flame Ministry on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Penning. My guest today is Dr. Jacqueline Bussey. And we're talking about uh, her new book, Love Without Limits, Jesus' Radical Vision for Love with No Exceptions. And we were just finishing, Jacqueline, your story about how the book had been censored and was not going to come into print by the original publishers. So you're telling us the rest of the story. Please continue. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So after I lost the book contract and uh, I was basically fired, <laughs> I was saying I, I got pretty upset about it. And one day I was talking to a friend and, this, you know, sometimes when a friend says something, it just gets through. And she said to me, you know, Jacqueline, they just want you to shut up and disappear. And that's exactly what you've done. And I actually had, you know, I thought about it. I thought, oh, for two months, I haven't really told anyone, you know, what's happened here. I was so ashamed. I didn't know how to get the rights back. So that very day, I sat down and wrote a short blog about what had happened. You know, I don't name the publisher, but I just wrote that. It was very healing, you know, and I realized at the end of that writing that I thought I'd lost everything, but what I had not lost was my love without limits, you know, for my friends. And it was was surprisingly Mm -hmm. heartening. So I wanted to post the blog on social media, but I also took a picture to go along with it to show folks how I felt on the inside about what had happened. So it was a picture, a very close-up selfie of my face, and I look awful because I was so depressed. And I took a piece of duct tape, and I wrote in black Sharpie censored on it, and I put it across my mouth. And I did that post, and the post surprisingly went viral. And so many wonderful Mm -hmm. people liked and shared the post that they started tagging the CEOs of other presses. And they actually tagged the CEO of Fortress Press. Yeah. And also, coincidentally, this is amazing. On the very same day that someone, you know, in this very moment that I did that uh, whole post, the senior acquisitions editor for Fortress Press was seated right next to my agent at a writer's conference. And he saw the uh, with me, you know, he's 900 miles from home and he sees my face on his phone and he uh, turns to my agent, not knowing that's my agent, and he says, hey, do you know who Jacqueline Bussey's agent is? You know, we're really interested in, in buying her book back, you know, from the original publisher. 
And my agent was like, I'm her agent. And this has been two hours of my post <laughs> going viral. And so he sends the post, he sends the book out electronically and they made an offer to help me buy back the book, a generous offer, not the whole amount, but, but a wonderful offer to help me buy back the rights to the book within 24 hours of the post. I found that new publisher. Thanks wow. to my Facebook squad. <laughs> yeah. So it's a beautiful ending. Yeah, it is. And it's a, it's a very powerful book. I must say I've, I've, been really enjoying reading it. One of the things you talk about in various places throughout the book is something called the a single story. What is that? Yes, the single story is a phrase that I learned from the wonderful uh, novelist Chimamanda Adichie. She has a TED talk that's called The Danger of a Single Story. And I teach that in most all of my classes. And the idea here is that, you know, there's groups of folks about whom our culture has a single story. And Chimamanda Adichie does not mention Muslims, you know, or LGBTQ folks, but she is talking about that this is dangerous, the ways in which we stereotype whole groups of people, and then we use that to not treat them fairly and to treat them not justly in our, in our culture. So I take her concept of the single story and I apply it, for example, to Muslims in our present day. And I say, okay, if I say to you the word Muslim, what's the single story being told about Muslims in America today? And everyone knows the answer. You know, I'm on book tour right now and nobody Uh ever stumbles. They say, they say terrorists. They say ISIS. They say enemy, right? That's what we mean by the single story. And the single story can be t- is told about many, many groups of people, not just Muslims. I mean, I would argue there's parts of the world where a single story is told about Christians. And, you know, this is equally tragic. The single story is wrong. You know, like we cannot stereotype billions of people, right? And so I do talk about that in the book. And, and I try to overcome the single story about Muslims because it's it, it, obvious to me from 15 years of teaching interfaith studies, you know, like I'm the chair of interfaith studies here at my college. I learned very quickly Uh that students are coming to the classroom. It's not their fault. I'm not blaming them. They haven't had an education in world religions, right? That's our failing as a culture. They come to the class simply with stereotypes and media sound bites, most of which are false, or at least I should say are single sided. And we want to balance that out, you Mm -hmm. know, because there's also these amazing Muslims doing incredible things, providing, for example, free health care in my own hometown. And that doesn't make the news, you know. So I I just want us to have a well-rounded understanding of our neighbors because that's what a love without limits asks of us. And that's so powerful. Um, One of my previous guests, who you happen to know, uh, is a Muslim woman. You talk about her in the book. Uh, Also told, shared about how Muslims believe in Jesus and they uh, talk about the loving relationship between people. And that's not a story we tell not a story we hear in the media either. So, yeah, there, we have a single story, not only about Muslims, but you also mentioned that a lot of people have a single story about Christians as judgmental, hypocrites, and anti-gay. And that is something that we, I've experienced with other groups of people thinking about me as a Christian. And it's, it's very difficult to break through that. Um, when that's the single story somebody's using against you. And it's certainly not loving when we do that. Um, One of the other things you talk about in your book is love for self. And you use your mom in um, a number of parts of of the book as uh, a way of talking about some of the love, ways that you learned to love. And so what do you mean about love for self in this? Yes, yes. Thank you for for that question. I I think this is exceedingly important that a love without limits also includes our love for ourselves, which for many of us is very difficult. And in that chapter of the book, Kathleen, I'm drawing on personal experience. My mother, unfortunately, 
was involved in an abusive relationship for much of her life. And, you know, you grow up in a house as a child and and you witness that and you think you don't use those words, you know, you don't think abusive, you don't think she lacks in self-love. You just think this is a hard home to live in. That's what you think. You know, you see the sadness, you see the grief, you see the effects it has, you know, as you're, as you're growing up, like on the entire family and, you know, and on your mother. <laughs> and so I've always wrestled with wanting to write about that. But it's very hard because, of course, families that have a history of abuse, we want to have a single story, right? We want to say, our family is fine. Our family is perfect. Mm-hmm. We don't have these problems. We don't have an abusive history. We don't have that. So, so abusive families have a single story, too. And I realized that for so long in my life, because, again, I was ashamed, you know, of that aspect uh, of my home life, that I didn't tell the truth about it. So... As a theologian, though, and as a person of faith, I realized I really needed to reflect on that. And a lot of people are trapped in abusive relationships. A lot of people are lacking in self-love. And so I wanted to go there. And And I go there in the book. And we're going to have to take a break again, Dr. Jacqueline. Uh, So please stay tuned. This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. This is a Flame Ministry, and you are listening to Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. My guest is Dr. Jacqueline Bussey. And Jackie, Jacqueline, ah, that's one thing we can talk about too. Uh, Jacqueline, before the break, you were talking about love for self and uh, your the the home you grew up in didn't exactly engender that. So please continue. Yes, absolutely. So I I like to talk about self-love in the book because I find that so many people that I meet don't feel that they're worthy of love. And I am really interested in the ways in which Christians for many, many millennia really have taught that pride is a sin and that Selflessness is the goal. And I really address the ways in which for folks who don't love themselves or for folks who have suffered abuse or assault, you know, or that pain of the loss of self, that we really shouldn't be preaching to those folks that they need to have less of a self. So I am, am begging, really, for a more nuanced teaching on pride and selflessness and self-love within 
our, our Christian, Christian churches and within our theology. And that feels to me really, really important. For some people, I say, yeah, some people maybe have too much pride. And maybe for those folks, mm-hmm. our teaching and our preaching needs to say, yeah, you need to scale that back. You know, you need to love other people as much as you love yourself. But some people, and I think we all know folks like this, they love other people more than they actually love themselves. And this leads them into harmful situations. So I make the case in the book that to love without limits is not to live without limits. Maybe we need to leave that abusive situation. Maybe we need to stand up for ourselves more. Maybe if we're part of a group that's been pressed to the margins, we need to have more pride rather than less, which is why you see pride movements. You hear black pride. You hear of gay pride. Mm -hmm. This is why, because not everyone gets an equal uh, dosage of pride and self-love in our society. And that. That statement that we call the golden rule, love your neighbor as yourself, is, I mean, it's not just a Christian statement, um, and it's there in just about every culture and every faith that's around. And when I grew up, like you mentioned in the book, the emphasis was always on love your neighbor. But Mm -hmm. I've come to realize that how can I do that well if I don't love myself? And, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. If I don't think much of myself, I'm not going to think much of my neighbors. If I think too much of myself, I probably won't think much of my neighbors either. So it's, you know, we've tended to overweigh that one part of the the golden rule, if you will, uh, to the point of neglecting how we deal with the other half of that as ourselves. And you know, like you say, giving ourselves permission to really love ourselves in a holistic and caring way. So um, I, I couldn't agree with you more wholeheartedly on that. And it, yeah, the, <laughs> the effects. I, yeah. The effects of that imbalance, I think we see really a lot in our culture and in our world today uh, as well. Um, and I, I'm i going to back up a little bit because at the, the introduction to this segment, I almost slipped into something that you talk about in the book about loving ourselves with and the name we use and call ourselves and by which we allow others to refer to us. And I almost shortened your name up. Uh, which is kind of a tendency many people do is to just, you know, automatically uh, shorten a name uh, to something that they refer to more commonly. And you talk about that also in your book. Would you be willing to share some more on that? Yes, yes, I do. Thank you. I do have a chapter in the book on the importance of names. And naming, because one of the things I've learned from teaching world religions is that names are so significant in all of the world's major religious traditions, and including in my own, in Christianity. And so many religious traditions involve name-changing ceremonies, you know, and I kept thinking, and the sacred texts involve name changes. And, you know, I just wanted to really think about what does this mean? And to do that, I began with a personal story just about how painful it is when people call us by our wrong names. And most everyone, I asked my class this the other day, I said, who's had an experience of being called by the wrong name or someone mispronounces your name? Mm. And everybody raised their hand. And I was like, see, because the way that bullies work, too, you know, in our society anyway, is they do name calling because names really, Mm -hmm. really do hurt us. And I just use the experience of people sometimes shortening my name, which is, of course, not serious. You know, that's not the same as being called a terrible name or anything like that. But I do draw on the well of that experience to, to, to understand compassionately the pain that people feel when they are called a really wrong name or a bad name. And we see this all the time. We see it in what some people call politically correct language. I say that's not politically, it's not about political correctness, it's about loving folks. If we love people, we call them by the Mm -hmm. name they want to be called. For example, let's just think of the term illegal alien. I mean, if there was ever a harsher term 
to talk about human beings. And look how it's already just biased the way we think about that. I think of the terms immigrant yeah. and refugee. And I prefer the terms that I have been taught by my immigrant and refugee friends that they prefer, which is new American. Think of the difference, new mm. Americans versus you're an outsider, you're an immigrant, you're a refugee. Well, the truth of the matter is immigrants to this nation, when they've been approved to come here, they're new Americans, right? You know, many of them have been American yeah. citizens now for, for a long, long time, you know, and we still think of them, oh, they're just a refugee, they're an immigrant. Mm-hmm. So I just think that's and important. We you know, have like to what take- we call things matter. Yeah. We have to take another break. This is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we're going to be right back. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various businesses interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. This is the Flame Ministry on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and my topic today is the new book by Dr. Jacqueline Bussey, Love Without Limits, Jesus' Radical Vision for Love with No Exceptions. So, Dr. Bussey, Jacqueline, um, you were just talking about the power of names and being called by the name that is that we want to be used. Um, But you also talk in the book about love and grief. Um, And you share some powerful things in there. Please share that with our listeners. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Kathleen. So one of the stories of my life, (laughs) one of the teachers about love in my life has been grief which I know is kind of unusual to think of grief as a teacher, but I think it probably is a teacher for most of us. So most of my life, uh, nearly all of my adult life, my mother was dying slowly of early onset Alzheimer's disease. And she had that for 17 years. So I was very young when she came down with that. She was very young. She was only 50. And so there was a lot of lessons, you know, that I learned about love through the period of being her caregiver. But I think the most powerful lesson of all, and it took me a long time to get to this point, is the realization that grief is proof that love outwits death. And what I mean by that is that that if love died, you know, along with our loved one, we would never experience grief. It would just be gone, right? We would just move on. Everything would be fine. But the fact is, is that love lives on, and that's the cause of grief. And so I, I, just understanding that connection has helped me in, in some ways. You know, every time I cry now, I think, 
this is my tears are the salty evidence that love outwits death and it outlasts it. And that is somehow oddly comforting to me. Yeah, that that's a beautiful way of expressing that. And I, I there there's kind of the other side you talk about too that um, there's a, a text within Christian uh, literature within the Christian scripture about uh, don't grieve as those who have no hope. And that, you know, I think about that as a pastor and talking to people at funerals and afterwards. Share a little bit how you've rethought that that whole idea as well. Yeah, thank you. So what happened to me when I was a young person going through this grief with my mother was I went to see a Christian counselor. I wanted to go see a counselor because I was very depressed and struggling. And I went to see the counselor, and she was a Christian, and she quoted that passage at me, okay? And she said, you know, Mm -hmm. it's a sin to despair, Jacqueline, and we should never grieve as people who don't have hope. And I have to tell you, I walked out of there feeling ashamed, you know, and I never went back to see that particular counselor or any counselor for, for far too long. And one of the things I learned from that experience was that we grief shame people. I've coined that term. We grief shame. We all are familiar, perhaps, with the term body shaming, the way we look at certain bodies and say, oh, that's unacceptable. We shame that person, whether they're overweight or they have a disability or whatever. But we also grief shame. And I I think many of us know that from personal Mm -hmm. experience. And so I am on a quest to, uh, you know, a calling to all people to stop grief shaming one another. And to, in fact, embrace the fact that love allows people to grieve on their own time does not have a timetable. You know, it's not a train <laughs> that's going to come and go at a certain time. That's not what, <laughs> that's not what grief is. And no. love allows folks the space that they need to continue to lament without shaming them for saying, oh, it's taking too long, or how dare you say these things? How dare you be upset with God? Um, I don't think that's loving, mm-hmm. and I'm calling for a radical re-understanding of grief and love and how they relate. And that that's a very powerful thing to say because, yeah, uh, the the whole idea of lamenting and uh, every th- showing one's grief beyond X number of days or weeks is not usually very accepted in our culture, and I think it's mm-hmm. because a lot of people are uncomfortable with their own grief and are uh, afraid of it, perhaps, want to bury it and don't want to go through it, which doesn't help one deal with it in the long run. Um, But it's, uh, and don't understand that that grief is an expression of love for the person who's gone. And to, um, it can be like what you've said about grief demonstrates that the love lives on and in that sense the person who is no longer physically present also lives on with us and if we kind of remember that it will give us permission to grieve and to share that grief um you know, no, it may not be helpful to be uh, crying all day at work uh, when you have to you know produce other things and do things, but that there needs to be ways and times to to grieve and to lament. And um, in the Christian church that and Christian culture, that's not as well defined as in some other cultures. Um, so that's uh, a beautiful thing to talk about and to remember. Um, one of the other things you talk about is how do we love those who we don't even like. Say more about that, please. (laughs) Well, that's the million-dollar question of our day, right? Our society's never (laughs) been more polarized. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that that I talk about that in the book. This was a book written during the election year, so I have a lot to say about that. And we're going to have to stop. 
yeah, we're going to have to stop and take another break. This is A Flame Ministry. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning on the BBM Global Network at TuneIn Radio, and we are going to be right back. Stay tuned. Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg one at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back. You are listening to Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Aflame Ministry. And my guest today is Dr. Jacqueline Bussey talking about her new book, Love Without Limits, Jesus' Radical Vision for Love with No Exceptions. And before the break, Jacqueline, we just got started talking about how to love those we don't like the people we don't like. Please tell us how to do that. (laughs) Well, that is a million dollar question, like I said, right? For our day and time. Yeah. I feel that it's very important to understand a couple of different things, right? One major thing for me is a quote that I once read, which said that an enemy is only a person whose story you have not yet heard. And that's from the philosopher Zizek. And I have always found that so powerful as a person of faith, because we're very quick to label people as enemies. And we do need to think about ways in which if we actually sit down with our so-called enemies or the people who think differently from us or believe differently from us or worship differently from us, we often find that we have not actually understood them. We have not understood where they are coming from. And So I really urge in this day and age, compassionate listening, sitting down with people who differ from ourselves and, and actually learning from them. And this is not something that we do very well or that we do very often, but I think it's important to remember, Mm -hmm. as I always say to my students, that understanding and agreement are not the same thing. They never were, you know, love Uh, asks mm -hmm. only of us to understand. It does not ask us to agree. And so lately, rather than just getting angry when someone is saying something that I completely disagree with, I mean, I absolutely stand my ground. I'll say, I absolutely disagree with that. But I want you to tell me, I'll say, I want you to tell me why you believe that so passionately. Why is that belief so important to you? And I'm often surprised, Pastor Kathleen, at what they say. There's often this really deep story that's tied into their identity or their personhood, and I hadn't thought of it that way. doesn't mean I agree with it, right? Uh, and then I that uh-huh, also uh-huh. opens the space for me to say, well, here's why I feel so passionately against a single story, for example, about LGBTQ folks, and then I tell a story. And that's what I do in the book. I just tell stories about my friends and how my views have changed on 
certain things over time and how important it is to be, I think a key part of compassion is just being open, being open hearted and being willing to change my, my views. If that's what's called for, if you know, I, I learned something new. So that's very important. Yeah. And you talk about understanding and even just the word understand, which, you know, means to stand under, to to be there and li- the listening part of it and to open our mind to actually hearing what somebody is saying um, and not just automatically cutting off what they're saying because our beliefs won't even allow us to listen and to hear what's being said. Um, that That's so important in this day and age where uh, there are a lot of divisive forces and uh, tendencies to polarize uh, where people try to do things in very cut and dry, black and white, either or. And that's another thing you talk about in the book, uh, the difference between either or and both and. And how does that fit into all of this and to love without limits? Yes, yes. I think people of faith are called to recognize the both and ambiguity of life, right? Life is both spectacular and it's shoddy. (laughs) People, uh, there's so much cause for hope, but life can also be hellish for so many people. And I think we're really called to live in that both and. As a Christian, I feel that we are, and I feel that that plays out in the way that we're capable of amazing acts, and we're also capable of awful acts against one another. And when we understand that about ourselves and extend mercy to ourselves, I find that we can sometimes extend it to others. And that's, I think, the major goal. And just sort of a final point on this, right? I I like to point out that God makes love a commandment, you know, in Christianity and in many Mm -hmm. other world's religions. Love is a commandment. It's not a, a fun option. You know, I joke in the book, it's not a fun option like flag football or ultimate frisbee. It's a commandment because love is not (laughs) extracurricular. It's the curriculum. You know, it's the only curriculum. You know, it's what we need to learn. It's not an option. And that's why in in my own tradition, I think it's a commandment because otherwise we're not going to do it. We're not going to sign up for that. It's so hard to love people that we don't like. Mm, Yeah. And it's sometimes even hard to love those we do like <laughs> that's not always easy on a day-to-day <laughs> yeah, basis day. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah we each have our idiosyncrasies that are not always very lovable uh, with from <laughs> others perspectives and yeah mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. It, the, you also talk about in the book um one of the kind of threads that goes through it is recognizing that each person is a child of God and the difference that that makes. Would you please say a little bit more about that? Yes. This goes back to what we were talking about earlier about names. You know, we come up with all these names in our mind for certain people. We have horrible names for certain groups in society. I don't need to name those. But I like to make the case that the only name tag that any of us should be wearing around is beloved child of God. And that is so beautiful. And it's far more radical than we think. So many people are wearing the name tag less than or not enough or unlovable or disrespected. And it's it's our culture that's made them feel that way. You know, we have made one another feel that way. We've made one another feel less than. And I just think we have to reclaim our dignity. We have to go up to people and put a new name tag on them. (laughs) And I actually do that in my class. I have students write out a Mm -hmm. name tag of what's the worst thing that they've ever been called or come to believe about themselves. And they're awful. The things they write are so painful. And then I make them take it. And put it in the paper shredder, which I bring to class. They shred the name, and then I mm-hmm. want them to rewrite the name by which they are called, the sacred name. And they write something so beautiful. You know, one of my students, for example, she wrote, um, not good enough. That was on her name tag that she shredded. 
And then she wrote Beloved Child of God, like it's her real name, you know, it uh, just gave you chills to see that. And I encourage everyone to do that mm-hmm. exercise for themselves. We got to shred the name text. We got to shred the, the wrong name. So important. Yeah. Uh, you know, to just think about what would happen if we, even the people we don't like and call our enemies, if we could just think about them as child of God, how that would change everything. But we have to take another break. And so this is, um, I am Pastor Kathleen Panning, and you're listening to A Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Oh, welcome back. This is a Flame Ministry, and I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today has been Dr. Jacqueline Bussey talking about your new book, Love Without Limits: Jesus' Radical Vision for Love with No Exceptions. So, Jacqueline, give us a one last thought or gem, and and let people know where to find the book and how to keep in touch with you too. Okay, yes. I would say it, one last thing that I would like everyone listening to know, and it's kind of the whole message of the book, is that you are loved without limits. No matter what you've done or what you've left undone or what people have said to you or what name tag they've asked you to wear, you are loved without limits. And especially you are loved by the God who, who is love itself. And, and I just, I just want that to be the parting words, you know, that I say. As for if anyone is interested in reading the book for themselves and checking that out, of course, I would appreciate that so much. You can uh, follow me on my website, which is www.jacquelinebussy.com. And you can purchase the book really anywhere books are sold, barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com anything like that. And I have designed a discussion study guide for anyone who wants to do, to study the book as part of a group, as part of a book club. I've designed that and I can give that to you for free if you just, you know, email me via my website. So I'm easy to find. You can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Jacqueline. And to listeners, I have thoroughly enjoyed reading the book. It is challenging at times, some of the the beliefs and things, and you know, and that's good because it means that we all have room to grow in our loving without limits. And 
we all have limits, and so how to break through some of those. Um, but it, uh, you also give a lot of examples from both Christian and Jewish scripture and how that, that all applies and fits in with the book. And so I've really appreciated that as well in the book. Um, so for people to... Uh, Follow me. Uh, my website is dub https colon forward slash forward slash a flame ministry consulting dot com. And I'm also on Facebook at a flame ministry consulting. Um, and you can follow me on either of those places and reach me there. You can leave comments. Please on um, boldbravemedia.com forward slash a flame dash ministry for the show. Please uh, leave comments and questions and uh, there as well. And it has been wonderful, Jacqueline, having you on the show again. I've really appreciated. I love the book. Want everybody to go out and read it and uh, share it. It's great would be great for a discussion in a book club like you talked about or for a uh, a class in at your uh, in your congregation it would also be great for that kind of thing um for other people uh faith leaders hire me to ignite god's love in their own and their own fascinating gifts in their ministry uh and that's one thing you can do uh, that I help with as well. And you can uh, send me an email uh, again uh, on my website. There's ways to contact me, uh, Kathleen at aflameministryconsulting.com. So it's been great having you here, Jacqueline. It's been great having all of you who are listening here. Have a very blessed week and come join us again next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Have a great day. This has been a Flame Ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.